So, a lot of you have been wondering who Adande is. He helped me set up my account, so I'll tell you a little about him. He's a pro gamer, and he doesn't like to be on camera much. He's kind of shy. Adande is kind of like a Cinnabon. Warm and friendly. I don't know how Cinnabons are really friendly, but um, it's like... You know when you're walking by a Cinnabon and you smell the Cinnabon and all of a sudden you want that Cinnabon and it's just sweet and it's oh so yummy. Adani is kind of like that, that craving, like you have to get to know him. And then he's kind of like warm and gooey and he's coming over today so I thought we'd try to catch him on camera. I have no problem being in the friend zone. Is he the producer? The producer? The producer? Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Haha. <laughs> Honorary member. I smoke a lot of gas, drank a lot of surf, did a lot of dirt, flipped a lot of work. Hey, walk up in the spot, they like ball alert. Jump up at the drop, got residue all on my shirt. After years of perceiving Smoothie as a perpetually heartbroken man. I've been reconsidering my perspective in the last couple of years. Was he simply YouTube's biggest simp, or was there more to him than meets the eye? The narrative that he was spinning, turning girls down left and right, was nothing more than a carefully crafted facade. In reality, he was the one constantly facing rejection, relegated to the dreaded friend zone time and time again. I want you to sit back, think about it. Why did he continue to show up at social events only to find himself on the sidelines, watching from afar as others paired off? Why did he eagerly respond to every text message only to receive half-hearted replies or worse, radio silence? It wasn't because he was playing some strategic game, trying to maintain the illusion of being in control. It was because deep down, he still held on to a glimmer of hope that things might change, that maybe this time he would be the one chosen. I decided I was going to sit back and watch and become a relationship expert, an aficionado. My boy Robbie, when I was 12 years old, I was my first friend that got a real girlfriend, and I was fascinated by his relationship with his girlfriend. I would just sit back and just study every angle. And I could see how problems would start and see how you could fix the problems before they started. First thing I want to point out, for the single people, okay, there is absolutely nothing wrong with being single, okay? Society, for some reason, wants you to feel like you're incomplete if you don't have a boyfriend or girlfriend or in some kind of relationship to where you're getting some kind of action. But time and time again, his hopes were dashed. The girls he pursued would politely decline his advances, offering the classic, I just want to be friends line. And he being the kind and understanding person he is, would accept their decision with a forced smile, vowing to himself to move on. But moving on proved to be an arduous task, as he found himself drawn back into the same cycle of unrequented love. It's a difficult situation to be in, constantly being friend zone and turned down. It can lead to feelings of inadequacy, low self-esteem, and a sense of hopelessness. But it's important to remember that rejection is a part of life, and it doesn't define who you are. Everyone experiences rejection at some point, and it's how you deal with it that matters. Instead of letting rejection get you down, use it as motivation to improve yourself. Focus on your personal growth and development and make yourself the best version of yourself. The right person will come along eventually, and when they do, you'll be ready for them. As a guy, we overthink it trying to play it down like, no, this girl doesn't like me. But then it becomes obvious that, wait, this girl might like me. And then when we say, hey, I like you, we're crazy. Once the relationship has been established... I can help out, but in the friend zone type stuff, when people ask me, dude, I don't know if this girl likes me, what should I do, here are the signs, good luck. There was one girl that I used to work with, really cute girl. So cute to the point to where all the other lifeguards that was around me, they never wanted to go haul at her because she was just that cute. And she just never would have a boyfriend. And, I don't, we, don't, and we were trying to figure this out, like how does a girl this cute go so long without having a boyfriend? A few weeks later, she needs help moving. You can tell your true friends by who shows up on moving day. So I go into work one day. She walks over to me and she's like, Adande, listen. Um, I just moved from my apartment into this really big house with my sister. And she's never there. She just leaves me there. 
every day. Now, if she leaves me there again tonight, do you think it'd be okay if you just spent the night? Because I get really scared in this big old house all by myself. You know, okay, she calls me because I'm a trustworthy guy. She knows I'm not gonna try any funny business. All right, that's why probably she calls me. She wouldn't call the other guys. All right. So you know, I pull up in her driveway, grab my book bag and my Xbox and my clothes. I go to the front door, ring the doorbell. Hear me out. All of the stories he tells lead us to believe that he was the one turning girls down. But it's clear now that he was the one being friend zoned and turned down. He continued to be around attractive women and could not even get one marriage minded woman. Swoozy asserts that he desires marriage and intends to wait until that for intimacy. However, he engages in kissing and cuddling, which are known to be gratifying and mood enhancing. Can we not question the purpose of such actions, considering that they may lead to temptation and potentially conflict with the stated goal of waiting for marriage? They express confusion about Swoozy's behavior and the rationale behind these seemingly contradictory actions. In the realm of the youth, where dreams dance in our hearts, we harbored a naive belief that we, being the epitome of goodness, would automatically attract the love and attention of beautiful girls. We clung to this ideal, convinced that simply being a nice guy would magically open doors to the romantic bliss. However, we were sadly mistaken. This girl is all up on her Facebook doing yoga. So that's a thing. We're like monkeys and just make out fighting. As we're going at it, she's like, listen, 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 I have a rule. I never take off my pants the first time I hook up with a guy. Hola, 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 hold up. A good girl? I'm about to wifey you up so hard right now, you don't even know. So then I say to her, okay, I'm probably the only guy you'll ever hear say this, but I'm totally okay with that. I'm having a lot of fun just making out, since we're being honest. The longer we're going at it, the more violent we get. She's like punching me in the stomach. I'm like kneeing her in the face. You guys seen that movie, Mr. and Mrs. Smith with Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, you know the scene where they're beating the crap out? That is what's going on in this hotel room. And at one point she bites onto my lip and she rips off a chunk of my lip. Like I start bleeding. For the first time ever during a hookup, I'm fearful of my life. And in my head I'm like, Mm, maybe this is a good place to stop because the next level after this she's probably gonna pull out a chainsaw from underneath the bed and chop me into little pieces next day we go out to breakfast and everybody's giving us these weird looks because we're covered in bruises our mentor a seasoned bachelor who had experienced the trials and tribulations of relationships tirelessly imparted his wisdom upon us he sternly warned against us the fallacy of believing that being a nice guy alone was sufficient to win the affections of a good girl he emphasized that putting in the effort to improve ourselves, building confidence, and acquiring valuable skills were essential ingredients for a fulfilling relationship. Being single rocks. So for those of you out there all, oh my god, I hate my life. Being single is awesome. And you know what I'm hearing a lot from my female friends these days is, I don't get any boys are so confusing. Why are you guys so confusing all of a sudden? Because I'm a guy, I'm naturally going to side with the fellas here, but um... I'm gonna just go on record and say you girls are more confusing than the guys. Does anybody disagree with me here? Guys are not that confusing. We like to eat, we like to sleep. Some of us like video games. Most of us like movies. Most of us like technology. We're easy. I can't talk for guys overseas, like in the UK or anywhere else. Guys are confusing when their actions are pointing this way and their words are pointing that way. Cause I was in a relationship with someone and they randomly called me up one day and was just like, If you ever get a lap dance, we are done! Wow, where, where is this coming from? Like, she didn't even say hello, nothing. Just called me up, ring, ring, ring. If you ever get a lap dance, we're done. Come to find out, my girlfriend goes to a Halloween party and gets a lap dance, like, four months later. Here's her excuse. Well, it's different when a girl gives a guy a lap dance versus a guy giving a girl a lap dance. Totally different. In his 20s, it seems to be a reoccurring pattern where Swoothie allows himself to be disrespected, which is a common experience at that age. Despite his financial success, Swoothie faces challenges in his relationships with women, which he attributes to poor treatment. Surprisingly, he now expresses a desire to be in a relationship for happiness, which contradicts his earlier beliefs that relationships should be solely about marriage and not recreational purposes. This story Swoothie recounted is a classical tale of missed opportunities and unrequited love. It's a story that many of us can relate to. It's a reminder that sometimes we need to take risk in order to get what we want. In this particular story, Swoozie was clearly interested in a woman, but he was too afraid of getting hurt to make a move. He played it safe and stayed in scent mode. 
which ultimately led to him missing out on a potential relationship. It's easy to understand why Sweezy was hesitant. Getting hurt is never fun, and it's especially painful when it comes to the matters of the heart. But as the saying goes, nothing ventured, nothing gained. If Sweezy had been more assertive and pushed for a relationship, he might have ended up with the woman of his dreams. Wait, what? And apparently one night these texts came through because... Two reasons. One, she had just got out of a long-term relationship and she thought she needed more time. And two, she thought I was just looking for a friend with benefits. Ooh, I spent like the next 20 hours just ejecting feelings for this girl. She didn't even call to tell me this. She just texted it to me. Like, am I that insignificant to you? Oh, the last two girls that I was in flirtationship with, as soon as we got to that step where you get into relationship, they just kicked me to the curb. So I had lots of practice in getting rid of my feelings. It might have happened once or five times before, so I had become very efficient at it. She doesn't want to talk for a while, that's fine. She just got out of a long relationship, I understand. Before the end of the first night though, she calls me. Like, why are you toying with my emotions right now? And I just let it go to voicemail. And she left me the sweetest voicemail ever. Like, this girl knew what she was doing. We squashed it and she was kind of like, yeah, I think I just overreacted. And if you still want to keep trying, we can keep trying. We talked it out. We got back to business as usual, but that force field was back in business, baby. Security around my force field was at threat level red. And then she sends me this. And I got back to work on another video. Uh, we were Skyping every night again. About a week later, she's like, please don't get mad at me for asking this. And I want you to be honest, but I get the feeling that the warmth is kind of gone between us on your end. Is that accurate? When she said that, I don't know how she knew because I was not making it obvious. I was like, yes, it is. Trust me, I want it to be there, but I just think it's going to take some time. Honestly, after I got that text, I think my emotions are just trying to figure out if you are the right person to invest into. Instead, he chose to play it safe and protect himself from potential heartbreak. And while that's perfectly a valid choice, it's also a choice that can lead to regret. As Woozy as gets older, he may start to look back on his life and wonder what might have been. He may wonder what would have happened if he had been more assertive and gone for what he wanted. It's never too late to take risk. And pursue our dreams. But the older we get, the more difficult it becomes. So if there's something you want, don't be afraid to go for it. You never know what might happen. However, we see this exact story play out again with the same results. But before we get there, let's take a look at a couple more stories. How to get a guy to like you. If you're one of those girls who has your eye on a guy and he has a girlfriend, don't do that. Please don't. It's pretty simple nowadays. Have a hot profile picture or just look really good in your YouTube videos. Oh, hi there. Oh, hi. Please be single. Yes. Yes, I approve. Yes. Who else do we have here? Oh, yes. 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 Um, no. No pictures in your photo album with guys not named Swoozy. There he is again. He's right behind you. Swoozy seems like a weirdo here. I understand satire. However, he never speaks from a position of confidence. He speaks as if the woman is always a better person than him. And that we are lucky if a woman would ever be lucky to even be with us. Just a quick note on the sexless innkeeper. Swoozy gets fooled into a housing a girl for free. So she wouldn't have to pay for a hotel. This man, 36 years old, still folds anytime an attractive woman gives him attention. They give him a kiss and make him feel like he's not like the other guys who simply wants the cookie. We understand that this is exactly what a simp would do. Look past the fact that he has social skills on YouTube because his life has shown us that he wants to just relate to us as being single. Remember, he was 25 when he started teaching us. Now that he's in his 40s, he just seems like a loser. Hmm. So then I'm thinking, what do I have 
that Chris Brown, all these other A-list celebrities, and Logan don't have. Like, what's so special about me that literally the first time we hang out by ourselves? So it's like 1 or 2 a.m. now. We're on this couch watching TV. She starts rubbing my leg, and she goes, is it cool if I spend the night? I mean, I guess. So then she's like, all right, let me borrow some pajamas. Go in my bedroom, give her some pajamas. She's on the bed. Come back outside, I turn off all the lights, go back in the bedroom, and she's asleep. 40 seconds from me leaving the bedroom and coming back, you're asleep. You could have slept in the guest bedroom, but you slept in my bed. Note to self. Next morning I wake up and she's like, okay, I gotta go. Uh, is it okay if I keep these clothes? My Uber's here. Uh, it's, it's whatever's. Now I was gonna tell Logan about this, but then I was like, I'll just tell him tomorrow. Three days later, I get another text from her. Hey, what are you doing tonight? Let's kick it. This is like at midnight. She comes over, she asks to spend the night. I say, mm, she asks for some clothes to wear. I say, mm, I brush my teeth, come back out, jump in the bed. Me and Julia start making out a little bit. Two minutes into this makeout session, she rolls over like, good night. A few nights later, I'm hanging out with my boy Alex Wasabi and I tell him this whole story. And he looks at me and he goes, bro, you're the sexless innkeeper. What, what is that? Sexless innkeeper, they make you think some stuff's going to go down, but they're just using you as like a hotel. Not all comes full circle. Remember how Sweezy missed an opportunity in the flirtation video? In this video, Sweezy faces a crucial moment in his life. At 40 years old, he has a valuable opportunity to get married. Yet instead of being straightforward and expressing his intentions, he chooses to act like a high schooler. He decides to play it cool and wait for faith to decide rather than taking control of the situation and making his feelings known. My main goal is to protect my heart. So for a little over a year, I've been single, but taken, but single. I met this girl, we be kicking it, and she was just chill about everything. I don't think I saw anything ever bother this girl. We're, we're gonna call her New York girl, and we're gonna stop there because any more details, and y'all gonna go down to the police station, you're gonna have a whole bulletin board with the red ribbons and the strings. I know how y'all are, y'all got Safari open already, and let's say, no, just listen, let's relax. Just enjoy the story, okay, it's tea time. And I will go on wax right now and say everything that happened is my fault. So, I, you know, I had New York girl and then I had other friend girls, but the more I hung out with New York girl, the less I wanted to hang out with these other friend girls. So then the friend girls would start sending me texts like, I miss you, can I come over Friday or Saturday? I'm here hitting them back like, hmm. I'm busy that day. Like, that's what's starting to happen. We could go into trust issues and all that fun stuff. We're just gonna skip all of that because we're gonna get to the good stuff, me crying. You catch flights, not feelings. But stupid me, one day, woke up and I got the thought, you know what, like one day, if she randomly gets a boyfriend and is done with me, that's gonna like suck, like not being with her. I'm like 100% taking her for granted, so I should probably put a ring on it. I don't tell her this, but I actually start really liking this girl. My plan is I'm gonna go there, let her know how I feel. I wanna put a ring on it. So I tell her, yo, let me just fly out. We'll kick it for three and a half days, boom. But in reality, I'm gonna fly out there, let her know how I feel, and we kick it for 10 days. This decision reflects a fear of commitment and a reluctance to take responsibility for one else's happiness. It is easier to blame fate for missed opportunities than to confront one's own shortcomings. However, this approach is ultimately self-defeating. By failing to take action, this man risks losing a chance to create a fulfilling and lasting relationship. I flew over my friends, I flew over my family to come see you. And it was at that moment that I realized, simp, party of one. I'm the puppy in my simp video waiting for their human to get home. And simpin' ain't pimpin', yam shan. And this is how I transitioned slowly into the simp position without even knowing. So she gets back to my hotel room around 1.20 am. And I'm just like, oh, so how was your day? And she's like, it's fine, how was yours? Total deflection. When she gets out of the shower, I pull my Batman cards. I go in the room and I'm just like, uh, so are we gonna talk about this other dude or nah? And she's over here like, what, 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 what? Well, how'd you know there's another dude? Uh, well, I was a lifeguard for six years and I'm an animator. So pretty much all I do is read the room and study people's behaviors. I'm assuming it's one of your new roommates. We gonna talk about it or not? We're adults, you're technically single. You can do whatever you want. And this is her response. Well, he likes me. I don't really like him. 
But then she says to me, she says, you know, tomorrow I'm just gonna leave early and go back to the house and cut it off and we're good. I wake up the next day, she gone. She's gone for about six and a half hours. And then she comes back, walks into the doorway and I see her and I'm just like, so how did it go? She walks in and goes, there's no easy way for me to say this, but me and you, we're done. She walks over, grabs her bag and heads for the door. This video serves as a cautionary tale, reminding viewers that opportunities are often fleeting and that waiting for faith to decide is not a viable strategy. It encourages individuals to be assertive and to make their intentions known and to take control of their lives. Only by doing so can they hope to achieve their golden dreams. Side note, as I watched this video, he wanted to marry this girl and wanted to propose to her before they were officially dating. That doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, as always, I kind of like to relate this to YouTube. So think about it this way. The YouTube platform presents content creators with two distinct approaches to achieving success, right? One approach involves creating subpar content in the hopes of garnering a large number of views, such as 100,000, and that's all through sheer luck. This approach often involves minimal effort and a lack of dedication, with creators spending a mere two hours per week on their videos, and when their desired results fail to materialize, these creators frequently result to blaming the algorithm, trying to absolve themselves of any responsibility for their lackluster content. In contrast, the second approach embraces a commitment to continuous improvement and excellence. Creators who adopt this approach strive to create the best possible videos within the constraints of their skills, knowledge, and resources. They recognize that producing high quality content requires a significant time and effort, often dedicating 30 hours or more to a single video. Rather than relying on solely luck, these creators let their outcome of their efforts speak for themselves. The key difference between these two approaches lies in the mindset of the creators. Those who take the first approach prioritize short term gains and immediate gratification, often at the expense of long term success. They view content creation as a numbers game, where quantity trumps quality. In contrast, those who embrace the second approach understand that building a sustainable and successful YouTube channel requires patience, hard work, and a genuine dedication to creating valuable content for their audience. While the first approach may yield occasional moments of virality, it is ultimately unsustainable. Audiences are quick to recognize low effort content and are more likely to engage with creators who consistently deliver high quality videos. In the long run, creators who prioritize quantity over quality will struggle to retain their audience and build a loyal following. On the other hand, creators who embrace the second approach and focus on creating the best possible content are more likely to achieve long term goals on YouTube by continually honing their skills, expanding their knowledge, and investing significant time and effort into their videos, these creators create a positive feedback loop that attracts and retains a loyal audience. Ultimately, the choice between these two approaches is a matter of personal preference and values. However, creators who are serious about building a successful YouTube channel should carefully consider the implications of each approach and choose the one that aligns with their goals and values. So after all of this, there was a comment that I saw on this video that I think sums up Swoozy, YouTube's biggest simp. For a little over a year, I've been single, but taken, but single, but taken. Every Swoozy video I've ever seen since 2011. The reason Swoozy is a simp is because he always believes. I'm never good enough, lad. I'm never good enough. Because it's always for some other dude.